Good evening and welcome back to my the coffee bar in my home. I'm Joseph Brewer and tonight we're going to start on uh, uh, session four discussing my book, A Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. And uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing uh, tonight is be excited when you greet people. A little exuberance goes a long way when you're greeting people. Um, make them feel like you're excited to meet them because you should be. Uh, you should be excited to meet guests and to welcome them to your church. Uh, let them see that excitement. Let them know, hey, I'm glad you're here. Um, you know, don't don't get carried away and don't overdo it. But, you know, sh show them some excitement. Let them see, hey, yeah, I'm glad you're here. And uh, it does. It makes a difference um, when you greet people. Uh, another thing to do is to, um, we're all going to have at some point um, folks with mobility issues. So keep an eye out for those folks and um, help them. And we have a ramp in the back of our church uh, to make it easier for for the people with mobility issues to get into the auditorium. So um, we will walk them around there. If they're driving, we'll direct them uh, where to drive to and uh, meet them over there and let them in if need be. Um, we also have a wheelchair that we keep in our church. So if somebody shows up that doesn't have a wheelchair but needs it, or e even if an emergency arises and we need to use the wheelchair, uh, we have one available that the uh, um, the ushers, greeters, and others can use uh, to assist folks. But look for people with the mobility issues that need help. Um, we're all going to get there at some point in our lives that we're going to need a hand um, if we live that long. So uh, we're going to want somebody to be kind to us. We're going to want somebody to be looking out for us. So um, take that opportunity and... Uh, Look for people with mobility issues so you can help them. Something else to keep in mind is trash isn't appealing um, on your property. And uh, you may not be tagged or designated as a janitor or the groundskeeper or something like that. But if you see trash out in the front of your church in your area that you're greeting, um, go pick it up, throw it away. Um, you know, make the front of your church look presentable. Um, that's part of um, welcoming folks and greeting folks. Because if you, um, you know, people show up and you're stepping over trash to greet them, it, it it's not going to reflect well on you. So uh, go ahead and pick up the trash, throw it away before people get there. Um, trash blows in while you're there, go throw it away, take care of it. Um, you know, we're, again, uh, we're there to serve. Um, <clears throat> following the service, many churches have a time of fellowship, uh, many will have food uh, and uh, those types of things. So make sure that the people that show up, the guests, um, know where uh, they can go after the service is over, where you can take them, um, where they can go to have food and where they can go to fellowship. And also, maybe you connected with them. Maybe they see you as the person they connected with, and they would like to spend time with you. Make yourself available for that. Um, you know, spend some time with them. If, if, if you're that person, spend some time with them. Get to know them a little bit and take them over to where the food is, the fellowship, introduce them to people, um, show them around, make them feel comfortable, make them, you know, and let them know that when your next service is and invite them to come back, let them know, Hey, you want, you know, you want them to come back. So, um, that's, it's little things, but, um, important things that can make a difference in, uh, um, the experience of, of guests that come to your church. So, um, do what you can, you know, but be friendly and show them around, spend time with them. Now, I struggle with this one, um, not going to lie, but avoid polarizing topics, um, in particular politics. This country is very divided on politics. And 
we all have our opinions. Um, most of us are entrenched in our, our beliefs and ideas about politics. But how does that help the person um, at church when they're there to hear from God? Um, they're not there to hear from me about my political beliefs. They're there to hear from God. Um, so I don't want to get in the way of that. Um, I, I don't want to be the guy that, uh, you know, when, when that person goes inside and they're sitting in there and in the, and, and in the quiet of while the pastor's preaching, that person's fuming um, because I made them angry about something, you know, political I said to them, um, or even sitting there going, you know, hey, great, this guy, you know, he agrees with me on politics. I, I, how does that help them? Um, it, it doesn't help them. Um, get out of the way and let God have his way. Um, let God um, work on that person. And, and if their politics aren't the same as you, okay, let, let God do his work on them. Let the preaching um, have its way with them. Um, instead of us being a distraction and from, and us taking away from that, um, you know, let's, let's avoid those polarizing topics. And um, I suppose it could even be sports um, that could be polarizing, but it, I, I really see it um, in particular with uh, politics. So be careful with that and, and try to avoid those conversations with people. Um, some people are just going to insist. They're just not going to let it go until they find out your political views. Well, but be careful. Um, you know, try not to be the thing they're thinking about during the preaching. Um, you want them to listen to the preaching. You want them to hear the message that God's laid upon your pastor's heart to um, have an impact on them. I don't want them thinking about me and the, my political views. So be careful. Um, I, you know, do you want to be the person that um, distracted somebody to the point that maybe that was a sermon God had planned for them and uh, you made it so that they didn't hear it? Um, I don't know. I, I just be careful with that. You know, polarizing topics, um, they can be dangerous. So just be careful with that and, uh, um, watch out for it. And, and along those lines, you're going to have people show up that, um, based on their appearance, you're going to have a pretty good idea that, you don't agree with them uh, politically, philosophically, and other ways. Um, you, uh, they may make you uncomfortable. Well, well it, but it's not about you, and you don't want to be a liability. And so, again, um, unless they are a threat, um, unless they're a security threat. Who better to change them than God? Not you, not me. I mean, God's the person that's got to change them. Um, so get out of the way of that and, and don't be the person. Don't be, again, don't be the person that distracts from that. Now, if we have somebody come in that, um, what? Well, any male guest that shows up, basically, um, I have one of my ushers or one of the other men in my church sit behind them um, to keep an eye on them. Um, there's just, there's, there's so much going on and so many people that are looking to cause a problem. And so even though we want these people in our church, because without Christ, we're not going to change them. They're not going to change. So get out of the way of that. Um, but also be responsible and, and make sure that if you perceive that eh, this person, while they seem okay, 
they may decide to cause a little trouble or something, then seat um, somebody near them or a couple of people near them. And, and the other thing that you need to do is have your guys greet them when they come in. Don't let them think they slipped in um, unnoticed um, because that in itself will help to uh, um, keep them from you know, acting up on uh, some occasions. So um, anyway, just think about that. And um, even though we don't agree with what we see, um, let God have his way with them instead of us getting in the way. Oops, pardon me. Um, something else is being provoked. Um, so we had the threat of our church being picketed. And I had to really give that some thought as to, um, and prayer as to how we're going to deal with that. Um, what do we want to do? And no matter what, um, we made the decision to be friendly. Um, what they're looking for is they're looking for an opportunity to provoke you to make you look bad, to get you to say something and to get it on video. Um, if they can get you to uh, make derogatory remarks or um, to even take a swing at somebody, that's what they're going to do. And they want to get it on video because they're already looking to harm you. Don't give it to them. Um, and yes, it's going to take restraint. And yes, it's going to be hard. Now, they're not welcome on the property. Um, if they step foot on the property, well, then we will have to ask them to leave. As long as they stay out on the public, um, on the sidewalk or the street, um, that's fine. But we're going to be kind. Our plan is to be kind. And in fact, our plan is to take bottles of water to them. Um, and who knows, maybe in those moments of kindness, and uh, love that we show to them instead of um, reacting with anger, maybe it'll make a difference in their lives somehow. You know, maybe they'll see Christians in a different light. So um, go into it prepared for people trying to provoke you. Always be ready for people to try and provoke you and don't let them. Um, be ready to be kind and um the the church property itself is private property so um the, you know if somebody's a problem ask them to leave if they won't leave call the police and have them removed but in your interactions with them talking to them uh be kind and and don't give them what they're after don't give them the reaction they're looking for um and I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, because we haven't had to actually, we didn't, it didn't actually uh, happen, but maybe we can change uh, how people view us through a little kindness and a little love in that kind of situation. And, you know, but like I said, our plan is to take them bottles of water. And even though, you know, they're there picketing us, even though they're there trying to disrupt and cause us problems. Um if we're kind and take them a bottle of water, I, it, I can't even imagine how that would blow their minds and short circuit their thinking. So um, it's something to keep in mind, something to think about. Uh, come up with a game plan, though. Uh, figure out what you're going to do in a situation where people are trying to provoke you. Um, and I'm not talking about a security threat. I'm talking about people who just want to provoke you and are trying to get a reaction out of you that they can, you know, they got somebody with a phone or a camera trying to get you um, a video of you reacting poorly so they can use it against you or uh, witnesses that uh, they can use to sue you or your church. Um, don't give it to them. Uh, just don't give it to them. Now, if they're a security threat, um, that's a different situation and, and you'll have to deal with that in a different way. But um yeah, don't give it to them. It's uh, that's what they're after, and turn it back on them. Don't don't just don't give it to them. Be kind. Be friendly. So anyway, come up with a plan. Something that uh, you think will work for you, 
and work for your church and, uh, you know, prepare for it and, and be ready for it to happen. So now we're going to move into Usher specifics. Um, everything else has been generalities. And um, now we'll move into um, some specific duties of ushers. And okay, because I like it, I'm going to read uh, the definition uh, I came up with for an usher. And um, uh, this is based on 25 years of ushering, um, speaking with my other ushers, observing things, watching, praying and talking about it. I was, I was really struggling to come up with um, an actual definition for an usher because it's so much more than what people think it is. Um, so let me read this to you and uh, we'll go from there. So what is an usher? An usher he is the can-do, will-do, go-to guy for his pastor during the services at his church. He sets aside his personal desires to serve his pastor, the congregation, and the guests in attendance. He is the smile and extended hand of welcome as you enter the doors of his church. He's the guy ready with the answers to your questions, or he knows where to go to get those answers. The professional manner in which he conducts himself creates a smooth and seamless worship experience for all those in his building. He's also the watchman at the gate, keeping an eye out for dangers. He has a plan for when unseen, un, unforeseen circumstances arise. He's prepared to act decisively when called upon. He's also the guy that will show you to your seat and is entrusted to take up the offering. Um, it's ushering is so much more than just showing people to their seats or taking up the offering. Um, also leaders, and you may not think of yourself as a leader. You may not think of ushers as leaders, but, um, because he's there, um, standing there you're interacting with him. He's going to the front of the auditorium. There is some measure of leadership by his decorum, his dress, um, the way that he acts and carries himself and the things that he does and the way that he serves. So there is something of a leadership um, role um, in ushering. So um, use that. It's, you know, um, Use it to be a blessing. Use it to help others to see um, how they might want to conduct themselves uh, during the preaching um, or just when they come to church services. And I think I mentioned uh, previously that the apostles were Jesus's ushers. Now, obviously, they were much more than that, but they were his ushers also. So um, it's... It is an important position um, if even the Lord had ushers, because he did. The, those apostles, they, um, they brought people to him. They held back the crowds. Um, they served people. Now, it's, you know, it's a dual position for them as apostles, um, but they were ushers also. Um, so I think that I don't know. I think that lends some uh, a little more credibility to um, the position of an usher when the apostles were ushers. So it's more than just taking up the offering and showing somebody to a seat. And you can make it much more than that. Um, something else is when you're showing somebody to their seat, don't point, don't say, go on up there. Um, take them to their seat and gesture with an open hand. Now, some people are just not going to sit where you ask them to sit. That's just, it's just not going to happen. Um, you'll walk all the way down to the front because you had a seat picked out for them. And when you get there, you find out you're all alone. Uh, that person decided they wanted to sit towards the back 
And, you know, while you're still headed down there um, to show them to their seat, they made a quick right turn and found a seat of their own. Uh, I used to get really frustrated about that. And so did my, some, so did my other ushers. Um, well, as I started thinking about it, it, again, um, shouldn't we just be glad they're there? Shouldn't we just be friendly, loving, and just, just be glad that they're there, um, even if they are not going to be co cooperative with us for where we would like for them to sit? Um, so, and, and they may have a very good reason for it. So when you turn around and they're not there, yeah, you're going to be surprised because you were hoping they were going to follow you. You thought they were following you. And uh, you may even feel a little silly when you get there, but, but don't be angry. Um, don't get mad about it. And, 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 and when you, as you walk back, back by and you see them, I, I let them know that it, it's okay. Smile at them, that, that you're not angry because praise God, they're there. I mean, we're just, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Praise God you're here. Um, and, uh, I, you know, it, we can only do so much as ushers, um, as greeters. So, um, just be grateful for the people who are there, um, during the preaching, uh, you need to listen to the preaching and this is a little tricky. You're going to have to work on this one, but you need to have one ear on the door because you're still working. And you still have a job to do, but you also need to listen to the preaching and be engaged in the preaching. So you're, you're going to have to find the right balance there of listening to both at the same time. And also, don't fall asleep. Um, boy, don't fall asleep. Because again, people around you are going to see it. People around you are going to know that you fell asleep um, during the preaching. And that's just not going to look good. So um, don't fall asleep. Now, what we do is if we get sleepy, we, uh, our pastor has instructed our congregation to stand in the back, um, to stand back there quietly and not move around. So um, it's uh, maybe that's something that you'll want to do is, you know, ask your pastor, is it okay if we get sleepy? If, you know, you know, people are working, um, you may just come off of a, a long shift, went home, showered, changed your clothes, got into your suit, got to church or whatever. And yeah, you're going to struggle to stay awake. The moment you quit moving, it, it's going to be tough to stay awake. So um, find out with your pastor, is it okay if I get sleepy um, from, you know, working that is it okay if I stand in the back? Is it okay if I, I'm not going to move around. I'm not going to be a distraction. I'll just find a place in the back where I can stand so that I can listen to the preaching. Um, and I can effectively listen to the preaching. I don't want to be sitting there nodding off because um, the preaching is important and I don't want to do that. So would it be okay if I stand in the back and find out? And um, if you're the pastor's agreeable to that and you're the head usher, um, let your ushers and greeters know that, you know, if you get sleepy, don't go to sleep. <laughs> don't, don't fall asleep during the preaching. Stand in the back. Um, don't be moving around a lot and causing a distraction, but, but stand in the back and stay awake. Um, again, you're a leader. People see what you do. Um, you know, to some degree, you're, you're, you're some, there's some measure and some standard of um, what a man in your church should be and, and should do. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, it's just one of those other things that, uh, you know, just trying to serve God to the best of your ability, not be a distraction, and to help folks and be a blessing. So anyway, um, that's it for this week. So let's pray and uh, I hope you have a good week. Thanks for stopping by again. Father, thank you for, again, uh, for this opportunity. Thank you for these folks that stopped by. Pray that you would just bless them. Um, pray that you would bless the uh, greeters and ushers in their churches. Use them in a mighty way in people's lives, Father, that they would make a difference. They would make 
a difference in their pastor's life, um, a difference in the lives of everyone they come into contact with. Um, just give them the tools and the means to be that blessing. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night and have a good week.